morning, afternoon, evening. This is the last Reds report of the 2020-2021 season. Uh, Basley made it to the playoffs and I suppose fell at the first hurdle against Swansea. The fact that we're disappointed about that, I think is a huge sign because it shows that, you know, we can compete um, with us as always. Um, full season, isn't it? You've done a full season, mate. I can't believe it. No injuries either. <laughs> From January, I went off a few weeks. January would be a bit of COVID because apparently there were a bit of COVID going about. But other than that, fighting fit, mate. End of season. No, and it's it's been. I mean, we talk football. It's been a good season as well, hasn't it? We've got the sponsor on board, and obviously, even to, we'll have a competition question for this one as well. Um, the tennis store come. We've given loads and loads of stuff away, which I think is really nice. And our listening figures are up twenty percent. So I don't know if people are just listening twice and it's still the same four people doing it. Or, or... <laughs> no, it's because our lasses, our lasses uh, signed up to it as well, so that's boosted it a little bit. Okay. So instead of listening to you, she listens to the podcast. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, but no stuff that stuff that tennis store have sent us has been fantastic. I mean, they're doing all sorts on Twitter as it is. Um, but yeah, really, really good and really uh, happy to be in partnership with them, mate, to be honest. Yep, definitely. And don't forget, they've got some great Father's, Father's Day gifts coming. Um, I've sent the link to, to my wife and she ain't got Twitter. So <laughs> I'll send her a website. Um, I'll send a web address to them. And um, Steve, uh, like I said, not not too much. You know, um, the season is now over. You know, we know that Brentford is going up. Um, if you look back at the playoffs, surely the highlights, At that first, uh, that first playoff on the Monday night, so that must be, you know, highlight of the season, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, the first, the first playoff game was hyped up. Luckily enough to be there, fans back in the ground. Um, I think it were a decent performance. I thought. Uh, I know you were uh, watching it from home. <laughs> In the comfort of your own home on your settee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, it was, I think it was just that bridge too far, really, weren't it? Um, it's been a fantastic season. It really has. Um, once Val's come in, the, the change he's brought with him, it, you just you just can't, you can't explain it. You can't describe it. It's amazing. Yeah. Nobody saw that coming, did they? Right. Um, as always, then, uh, let's do a, a bit of a, a report card for the for the end of season, the end of term. Let's see who's graduated. Let's see who needs to resit another season. Um, so um, first of all, what we've seen above, have we? If you look at goalkeepers, Jack Walton, and then um, Colin sort of got the nod for the cup game, and then the Chelsea game, which seemed to spur us on to that to that long run, we, that unbeaten run we went on. Um, Goalkeepers, we've got two really first choice goalkeepers. Although Colin seems to have that, the nod. And um, are you happy? Do you want to see a little bit more? Is it something you don't like? Sort of um, results. What sort of stats do you want to do? You want to give these goalkeepers? What, what sort of scores? Well, no, I mean um, Walton start at season. Um, little bit surprised that he was dropped and then didn't get back in. Um, a personal choice yet again. My opinion. Uh, I would pick Walton over Collins, um, purely and simply because, yes, Collins comes out of his box, bit of a sweeper-keeper sort of thing, um, but I never feel safe when he does it. And he's made some fantastic challenges, and I know people will be shouting, oh, what about this, what about that? And yeah, he's, he's done some brilliant saves, etc. But um, I just don't find him as commanding as Jack Walton. Um, I mean, he's got number one shirt at minute. Maybe he'll start with number one shirt next season. Uh, but I think we've got two really good keepers. So both, you know, both of them's definitely uh, B minus pair of them. How about that? Yeah. Um, we don't need to look for a new goalkeeper, do we? I wouldn't have said so, no. No. No, definitely. Um, well, well, listen, the defence um, has been pretty same really throughout the season um let's first talk about uh, Mads Anderson who had a very up and down season the season before one point went back then he to Denmark for a little bit and get his head right um since that project comeback been an absolute rock and this season again hasn't he he's 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 really really come on and he's I know you you particularly um I can't say a soft spot but you, you admire the journey that he's um how yeah. far he's come so I mean far. that lad, that let's face it that lad got a lot of stick he were poor when he started. 
Um, and not because he's a poor player. I just think he was young lad, different country. T- took a bit of time to settle in. And like all football fans, we're all fickle and first sign of weakness or anything. We're always on the backs. It's just human nature. Um, yeah, he went away, did his guru bit with this guy that he's listening to. But looks like he likes a bit of fishing as well. So he's obviously been doing that. But he's come back this season. Val's come in and I think Val's been a, a fantastic influence on him. Uh, for me, he were player at season for me. It were toss up between him and Alec. I would have given it Anderson. Uh, but yeah, you're, no, you are right. I have got a soft spot, soft spot for him. I think he's been absolutely outstanding. They're all nice lads, but for me, there's something about Anderson. He's always smiling. I think he is genuinely to play, to get a chance to play in England, to play for a club like Barnsley. Um, score for him then on his report card? Oh, I say definitely an A. A, yeah. a star, that lad, definitely a star. He's, he's gonna, going on to bigger, better things. Um, the other position that's really been a, a mainstay has been Mikael Hellick, um, the pole joint and player of the season, called up to the Polish to the Polish squad. I think he's uh, he's, he's playing tonight, isn't he? I think he's yes. been chosen yeah, again. I don't know. Yeah, we're in starting lineup tonight. Yeah. Um, I mean, what I say, you talk about good defenders with Anderson, but Hellick is is just he. He settled in straight away, hasn't he? He never oh. had like an off day. I know we had the, the red card, wasn't it? Sort of early on in the season, but what a player we've got in him. No, again, uh, learning learning from uh, Big Val. I think um, we've never never had so many centre halves with such quality. Uh, Elik, deservedly player at season. Um, yeah, definitely a rock. I'd like to see a, another yard of pace in him, but I think that's I think he has got a little bit quicker as season has gone on. Uh, maybe that's his positioning. Um, but no, uh, impressed with Helic as a centre half, definitely an A for him. If you want to move on, as we're talking centre halves, you've got Solbauer now. Sibic's come back, amazing turnaround for Sibic again. Um, you've got uh, Kitchen. We've seen little spurts of last couple of games. Um, need, obviously, to see more of him. But I think as centre-halves go, we have never had such riches in that position. And they can all play with each other. Uh, it, it, it's, yep. it's, it's fantastic. Although I must say, I don't think Solbauer will stop. I think Solbauer will go, but that's just me again. I, I was going to ask, has he got another season in him? He's now 30, and, and we know we have that policy done with, but obviously he's, he's, he's still under contract anyway. Um, is he just a backup and maybe in training to get some of the younger lads, you know? I mean, there's not much improvement needed. We haven't seen enough from Kitchen yet, but that's not his fault. But you've got potentially four for three positions and Solbauer as a, as a I suppose, a, um, like an extra somewhere, haven't you? Because yeah. he... When he was called upon, he changed that season, didn't he? When we were oh, really, God, yeah, really... Yeah, the games that he's played have been, I don't know, cameo roles of, I don't know, Beckenbauer-esque or whatever you want to call it, because he's had some really good games when he's come on. But I think start of next season, I would expect to see probably Anderson, Helic, Sibic as your main three. Yeah. Kitchen, we've not seen enough of yet, so obviously he's going to be thrown into mix. But I think Sol Bauer may feel he may be happy with that fourth fourth man role. Uh, maybe he wants to do a bit of coaching. You never know when they get to that sort of age. Having said that, maybe he wants to, you know, want, he'll have one last move in him. And it demanded not a mega amount of money, but at least he'd go to a decent side because they've seen what he can do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, looking at the midfield then, uh, the midfield has been, again, selected itself for most of the season. Um, so let's start over the left-hand side. Callum Styles now, um, been a big season for him, hasn't he? he chipped in with some amazing goals. Um, not his natural position. What, what have you made of him this season? And what, what's, the, uh, what's the score on his card? You know, he's um, broken through. He's on a lot of people's radars. Um, he's impressed quite a lot of people, not only from midfield, but from that left wing back sort of role. Um, you know, he's, he can score a goal, he can hit a shot, needs to work on his passing. 
because uh, his passing at times, you know, is woeful. It really is. I'm sorry. Um, sometimes it's fantastic, but sometimes his passing can be all over the place. But, you know, again, young lad um, can only get better, definitely. Um, yeah. But I'd still, I'd still like to see him in that midfield role. I know he's done a fantastic job, but now you look at like Ben Williams coming back. Um, is it going to be his opportunity then to move into the middle if the man himself, Moy, does move on? Yep. What what score would you give uh, Callum Styles? Callum Styles, he can have a he can have a he can have a B minus. How about that? B minus. The other Callum on the other wing, uh, Callum Britton. Uh, people ridiculing the club when he first signed about we could oh, have yeah. had it for a free and everything. Um, let's not forget he was brought in to replace Jacob Brown. Nobody's mentioned Jacob Brown. I like Jacob Brown. And you know what? Young lad's got a big money move. Good luck. Best of luck to you. Um, Kellen Britton comes in from MK Dons for, was it 750000 or whatever it was? I, I can't even remember how much it was. Um, he's done hard eight, hasn't he? <laughs> and, and, and I underplayed well, I that. He, I know he's a personal favourite of yours. Um, if he can finish, if he can learn to finish, he will be a complete player. There's no two ways about that. He's got pace. He can defend, he can go forward, uh, he can cross a ball, he can take a player on. Um, it's just, I think at times he gets to that edge of 18 yard and what have you. And and I suppose you could actually say it for quite a lot of players. It's just sometimes poor choices uh, with either a pass or a shot. But again, for a first season in championship, definitely, or B plus for that lad. Very, very, very well done. Uh, this is the one where people will comment on um, social media, because I don't know if you have the same opinion as mine. Um, Captain Marvellous, captain on and off the pitch for Barnsley FC, and now nearly, well, no, he is out of contract, I suppose, isn't he? Alex Mowat, yes. your thoughts? Thank you very much, Alex. Um, he's been a great player at times. I think of the last few games, he's not been himself. If I was being perfectly honest, I know some people might say don't talk silly, but you can't tell me that he has been knocking ball about and getting forward and doing what he's done sort of middle middle third at season. I think last five or six games at times he's gone missing. Um, whether his head has been turned and he was always going to go at end at season and he didn't want to pick up any injuries or whatever, I don't know. Uh, but... I think I think he will go. I think I've said all along that I think he will go at end of season. And yeah, you know, we can replace him now. No matter how good a player is, it's you know, one team is not built round one player. So yes, thanks very much, but can go for me. Scorecard. C. Right. And um, I, 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 I agree with you. Uh we've had many discussions and I think we were overly reliable on him, I think, uh, especially his early years. And he was brought in to replace Hurrahan, don't forget, who was a captain yeah. and, and, and left. Um, and after that year on loan at Oxford, he came back. And I think especially that season on the Standall, then on the Struber, he, he was. I think you've come to a point where I think he deserves a shot at, a, you know, big wages. You know, he's 26. Yeah. Um, if he gets a three-year contract, takes him to 29. Fantastic footballer. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind he's he's held the spirit together and a fighting spirit we sure to get to the playoffs. But I'm not worried about losing him. As no. in, I we people moaned when other players went. The, the recruitment system has worked so far, so let's let's have faith in that. Jacob Brown, people moaning what you're doing. Well, hello, Callum Britton's there. So I think he deserves it. And, and I mean that by the bottom of my heart. We've interviewed him. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. An example for you all, you know, young players out there that, that want to yeah. be that midfield player. Absolutely amazing. But good luck to him. And I think um, he's, he's, he's done what he needed to do for Barnsley. I think Barnsley have now, after this season, I don't think this is a one-off season. I think the infrastructure on the pitch and off the pitch is there now that we've got that system in place. We've got the young players. They're all on the contract. I, I reckon we should be aiming for top 10 at least next yeah. season. And they'll bring somebody in. Um, and I suppose that leads us to the man who's played with him most this season, 
probably a player that nobody thought we would see that much of, but what a season he's had, um, Rumal Palmer. And for me, um, he's still developing. I think he's learned a lot. And I think sometimes it's the little things that he does really well when he breaks it up with the tackle. You might not see him, and I know he's not scored any goals, but there's somebody there. There's a player in there. You don't go it, to the it, Man City, you you know. He does the dirty, he does the dirty stuff, doesn't he? He yeah, does the yeah. dirty stuff that other players like Moy and such don't want to do. Uh, I mean, I said at start of season um, when Matty James came in. Yeah, all right, he did a job, and I think Ramal Palmer and a few at midfielders did learn off him. Yeah. But I said it then and got ridiculed for it. But I'll say it now. Matty James was a stopgap. I wouldn't have paid him any more money for him to stay. In fact, I'm glad he didn't stay because Palmer's coming to his own. And anybody who says that that he hasn't uh, has been watching a different player to me because he has grown in stature, uh, he can only get better, definitely. Um, Another one who's improved, I think, immensely under Val. He's he's learned a a bit of the the dark arts sort of thing. uh, And that's what he needed. Yeah. And and one of those players that I think he he's repaid the faith that the coaches had in him. You know, I'm pretty sure he was the the the, the plan when James went back. And let's face it, James went to uh, to Coventry, didn't he? Yeah. And I know probably don't know right, but they've not they've stayed in this division, which is great because they were promoted into it. But not pulled any trees up. Not everybody's you know he's not in the team of the you know of the season or whatever. No. So good luck to Matty James. Don't get me wrong, but it's not somebody I I'd want to revisit no. because I think. No. With the coach and everything we've got, um, quick word down. We've not seen much of him, um, Herbie Kane, because he was, I suppose, always like the the, the successor or whatever. The big money was paid. For Herbie Kane. We've seen bits and bats, but never an extended run in the team. What do you make? What do you make of Herbie? Well, he, he needs he needs a run, doesn't he? Let's be honest. Um, and if Moik does go, there's your perfect replacement. Uh, he can put drop a ball on a ten bob bit. You know, he, 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 can, he can do a tackle. He's got a fantastic free kick. But we've just not seen enough of him. And the bits that we have seen, let's be, let's be brutally honest, not good enough. Not championship standard. Just because he's done it uh, in first division, like other players, they've stepped up to championship. This season's going to be the one, isn't it? We've paid big money for him, like you say. Is he going to be able to do it? We shall find out. Yeah. But again, potential is there again, isn't it? I suppose. Another one, Liverpool is. Academy. And I think that's the thing with it, with the the plan that the board are following. They are trying to get players in that have got that potential. Now, unfortunately, and I'm sure we'll come on to this towards the end, is I think we will lose possibly at least one player this this close season, if not maybe even two. But if we can keep the majority of the side together. Because we must have made a few bob with extra couple of games. Um, I know the announced figures for this last twelve months, and it's it's fantastic support from from Barnsley people buying season tickets and keeping club going like like we have done is is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, but we're a selling club; it's business, yeah. and if somebody comes in with a decent bid for one of our young players. You know, for a fact, there's no way they can afford to turn it down if you're talking no. millions of pounds. So we've got to hope that we can keep them together. But you know what we like. Yeah. Um, the forward line then. Uh, Barnsley, or oh, we have often spoke about the secret weapon, you know, any three from six could really start. So I, I want to go through them. Um, first of all, uh, I want to talk about Victor Adam Bayejo. You know, he's had a lot of loan spells away. I have to admire what I saw on social media today. You know, lots of players away, you know, holiday, you know, uh, Portugal. I know um, Woodrow is away with his missus to get away. Harry Winks and his missus, because uh, obviously the best mates, because they know each other really well. Victor Adebayejo was having um, driver training, whatever you want to call it, but somebody in. Uh, and he, he was working out today, put a video on. What does Victor Adebayejo need to do to be a more regular starter for the Reds? Improve. Simple as that. Uh, consistent performances. Um, 
in a way, has got to mirror, I suppose, what DK did to a certain extent. We know he can hit a ball. We know he's got a decent shot. His first touch at times is like my mother's. It's frighteningly bad. But, again, young lad who, who, who has got potential there. Yeah. Yeah. But he, he's one, I think, that is on a last chance sort of saloon because, you know, like you say, he's been out on loan. He's come back. He's had a few goes under Val. And Val obviously thinks somewhat about him. But I think this, I think first, up to up to Christmas, if he can do it, he'll be fine. If not, I think he'll be he'll be through door. Yeah. Um, Alex Freezer, another one that started a lot of games, has come on. Uh, when people say runs a lot, uh, he is very purposeful, isn't he? And when you talk about that press starting high up the pitch, he's executed at times. I mean, to, to perfection, I suppose, but really, really. Um, Closing down on defenders and goalkeeper. Um, what have you made for him? Because he's a bit like Marmite, isn't he? Some people absolutely raving about him. Some people not rating him at all. Yeah, he's, he's a bit of a uh, he's a bit of an enigma, I think. Dominic I love Cree. that word. You like that, don't you? You like oh, that. Oh, love it, love it. He's, he's one. Of, you, you know, he does a lot of running about. Well, my dog does a lot of running about, but it don't mean. Do you know what I mean? I think he needs to work a bit more on his end product. But he definitely shows. He's one of, for me, he's one of the strikers that he shows it can get into positions. I think he's got a bit of a brain on him where he can get into positions. Um, but I've got to be honest again. You know, this first three, four months at season, I think will be another telling, a telling time for him and a couple of other players to actually say, yes, I deserve to be a first choice. I deserve to be here. Um, otherwise, I don't know. Still got a bit to prove, I think. Yeah. Uh, another one that's been, I suppose, on and off as a few starts, then comes on. Um, Colour Chaplin. Now, um, it, it's it's worth saying that whenever Vels played Chaplin or Freezer, or he's, he's got three across the front, hasn't he? There's one really central striker with two sort of more down uh, the wide areas. Colour Chaplin often finding himself. Um, wide down the um, down the left. What have you made of his season, and and what needs to is will Conor, Conor Chaplin be a Barnsley player next season? What does he bring to the team? What does he need to prove on, or is is he the all round striker? What what's your thoughts on him? I think up to up to the last two or three games at season, I would have said he were a League One striker, always been a League One striker, always will be a League One striker, because for me, whenever he's come on. Apart from the odd flash, there's been nothing. And he's one that can run about all day, but there's no purpose, there's no there's no end product, there's nothing. Having said that, I've got to say the last three or four games, I think, you know, we've talked about this before. There's times that our midfield make our forwards look crap because they don't get service, they don't get a decent ball, and at times, when we're just lumping ball up in air, when you've got Conor Chaplin, who's three foot six, what sort of chance has he got to even show what he can do? He's good with his feet, he's good on floor, but we never, ever play to that strength. And I think if we had it done against Swansea second game, uh, I think we might have done a bit better because if you looked at Brentford when they played them, they played a lot of ball on the floor. And two big centre halves couldn't live with him. So I think the thing with Chaplin is he's definitely the sort of player that we need. But I just don't think he's the right guy for it now. He's gone on too long. I think it's time for him to move on. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because it's it's right, isn't it? We we often talk about strikers or they need to get the service, don't they? And yeah, often if they're not getting, that, they're not that, getting that, service, and this yeah. is what I'm this is what I was saying about Moit earlier on. For me. Last few games, he's not been finding that pass, whereas previously he was. Yeah. So I don't know whether a tactic changed. We we did at times go to a lot of long balls, and we've said it before, haven't we? God, it's it's it were a nightmare to watch. But I'm not being funny. You get three points out of it. Yeah. It's got it got us in fifth place, did it? Well, that's it. That's it. You t- you talk about surface. You talked about direct balls. Uh, Another striker 
that um, definitely changed that first leg or, or the how Barnsley were playing in that first leg was Carlton Morris, who came on in the yeah. second half at Oakwell. Um, he is the one that needs it at his feet, and he absolutely terrified defenders because it was almost stuck to him, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think impact player definitely. What, what have you made? What have you made of Morris, who obviously only arrived in January? Yeah, I mean he's been he's been carrying a groin injury uh, that's had to be managed. That's why he's only had sort of bit part roles. We've seen flashes of you know he's got pace, he can hold a ball up. He's he's like a bigger version of Chaplin to a certain extent. Um, I think he will, once he's fully fit, get this close season out of the way, start at season next next season, I think he'll be he'll be a nail, nailed on starter. Absolutely nailed on start. And he should be, because he he, he can uh, he can be a 15, 20 goal a season man, I think. And um, very much I suppose when you talk about 15, 20 goal, um the player that everybody's talking about, but obviously now in the past tense, uh, Daryl DK. Changed. Um, I mean, what a player uh, to bring him in alone. Uh, news from the club today was that although a uh, a fee was agreed to buy to, to, to purchase or to, to to bring him in on a permanent, after he was doing so well, wages were banned about by other clubs that the player wanted a wage package that the club um, didn't want to go to because that's not what the club's all about and they didn't want to change the sort of criteria that they set. So it sounds like maybe his head was turned. But maybe rightfully so, because what an impact and what a player Daryl DK was for the Reds. Oh, fantastic. Uh, he certainly did a job for us when we needed that sort of player. But it goes to show that that's, that is the type of player that we are lacking at the minute to, to make that ensemble up front. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't fault him. Yeah, we could afford his transfer fee, no doubt. But let's face it, if he's getting... If he's getting offers from Premiership, even lower lower down Premiership sides, you know they're going to be talking thirty, forty thousand pound a week, and we we just can't live with that. Um, you know, it's one of them, isn't it? Thanks very much. You've done a fantastic job. Does anybody want to buy a DK shirt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the last one um, has been, I suppose, ah. Uh, Dare I say most reliable striker because he's always been the top scorer. Yeah, you've um, got, yeah, you've got to say that. You've got to. Say and that. I think uh, Coley Woodrow um, is one of the only players that on social media has talked about next season already. Um, which uh, you know, because when the season's over, you look at every single word and you think, does that mean they're leaving? Does that mean they stay? Uh, they're all under contract, so I fully expect Coley Woodrow to be a Barnsley player at the start of next season. Um, but for a few seasons now, he's the man that you know. You can always rely on And I know he's had some spells where maybe he's not scored, but then he pops up with a, a fantastic goal, with yeah. a fantastic uh, uh, assist, I suppose, by, by Jordan Williams. But um, what a player Coley Woodrow has been again for us. Yeah, you can't you can't fault, lad. Um, I know we, we talked about him playing out of position to a certain extent under Struber. Um, he were never getting into that sort of attacking position in box. He were always either out wide or, or in sort of number 10 role. Um, but he is, he, he can play all of it front three. I think the problem that Cole is had, yeah, he's had some, he's had some pretty lean spells, let's be honest. But again, I come back to, if you're not getting service from midfield, it makes you look poor. If you've got to come back and collect ball, which let's face it, at times Woodrow has come back to halfway line to collect ball. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if he's fired up already for next season, that can only be a good thing. Definitely will stay, I would say. Um, I think he just I think he just loves it. I think he just loves playing for us. And maybe now he can see the other players that he's going to be playing with for next season. And th- and he's probably thinking, well, you know, I'm rubbing his hands together. It'll be another 15, 20 goals this season. We're a bit of luck. Yeah. Um, Dane Murphy, recruitment staff. What do they need to look at? Obviously, we know DK, although we were only alone, starting, is not coming back. Um, striker, midfielder, obviously, we, we have to presume, I would think, that Mowat, listen to me, if Mowat would have stayed, he would have signed by now. I think offers will have been in. It's up to him. If that means 
against maybe a Hans move or a move, you know, elsewhere in the country. That's that's down to him. Um, on the presumption that he leaves, where is the uh, you know the urgency to to recruit for for what position think, on the pitch? I think we need another striker. Yeah, I think DK has proved that. Um, whether we go for the big sort of key for more target man sort of thing. Yeah, I think if if he if he's wanting to play the style of football that he's wanting to play, he wants again a biggish guy up front, but they've got to be mobile. It's no good having somebody who just stands about. So I think a striker is definitely on cards. I think if they want to continue the growth that we've started this season and not sort of become that yo yo team of championship league one, championship league one. Um, they've got to look at, I'll not say breaking the sort of wage cap that we have in, in, in place, but I do really think they need to start looking now at uh, a better a better standard maybe of of younger player. I don't know. Um, like you say, I mean, so just Callum Styles, Britain came in, Ramal Palmer from City came, you know, all these are young lads who are just going to improve. But there's, it's no good bringing somebody in now at, I don't know, 18 years old who might just do this or might just do that. I think the standard that we need now is somebody who can come in at 20, I don't know, 19, 20, 21, that sort of thing, but has got a little bit of pedigree and you know can actually push us on now to that next level. Uh, I, I would certainly say definitely a forward and definitely another midfielder. Purely and simply because if Irby Kane can't cut it, we need somebody else. Yeah. A uh, couple of players that were just quickly because, uh, you know, they have played little, little parts. One person that I've been surprised with every time he's come on, and he's only made part appearances, but I've been extremely impressed with Jordan Williams. Yeah. Whenever he's come on, that urgency going forwards has been absolutely, absolutely amazing. Hoping to see more from him next season. Yeah, uh, he's another one of them young lads um, who's got that potential. I don't think he's quite nailed down his position as yet. Uh, Is he a right wing back or is he just a right back? Or, you know, God forbid we play him on left hand side and and push Styles up front. I would like to see more of him. Um, I do hope that Val doesn't keep up with the tactic of putting Callum Britton in middle of midfield because I just don't think that suits him uh, at all, to be honest. But who am I? You know what I mean? Um, Clark Adore. Yeah, it's another one I want to mention. We've there. not, we've not seen much of him. player that we've not seen at all this season. So does that mean he's out at Doer? From what we saw of him last season, you know, what a, a really talented young footballer he is. But he's He's obviously not got what Val wants. You've got Ben Williams coming back, which you think could be taking that sort of left yeah. left wing back role because uh, it would suit his style of play down to the ground. Yeah. Um, so th- let's face it, there is players, you know, Jasper Moon came yeah. on. Few, well, few I wanted to p- mention Jasper Moon and Apo Halme because they've both, you know. Well, Apo Halme's got called up for, for Finland squad, hasn't he? So... Well, he's, he's now been dropped again. Um, oh, I see. I've, 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 I've slept since then. I must have done. Um, he was called up to the provisional squad, but then I think he got dropped for the final sort of cut uh, ah, right. of, of the squad as well. But saying that he was, he was called up because a player got injured, so you would have always expected that he was. But it's the experience and the fact that he's being noticed. He needs regular football, though, doesn't he? Because I yeah, suppose you don't play regular. I think he's another one of these that that needs to sort of fasten down a, a particular position. He's not going to get in front of. Anderson, Elick, Sibic, Kitchen. So he's not going to be a centre half, but he can play that sort of old in midfield. Yeah. So do you play him and play Palmer further forward? It, it does give you that other option in midfield. Jasper Moon, as I say, again, a couple of performances he did end of season, looked hungry. He looked as though he's got a, a fight in him. He looks a tidy player as well. So we can't say we haven't got sort of rough diamonds ready to come in. But again, you're back to, do you rely on that so that start of next season, that's what you go with? Or do you think, well, we still need to bring one or two in that will bring them on? 
Um, it's, 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 it's going to be a, a balancing act, isn't it? Yeah. Um, last couple of questions. First of all, we talked about the players really important. Um, we can't not have a show, end of the season show, and talk about uh, Valerian Ismail. Bearing in mind, he came in the middle of a pandemic, um, left his wife and child to come and do a job, got us to the playoffs, which is the highest position we've finished in, I don't know how many years, I'm not very good with stats, um, done it without the fans. Yeah. Um, I, I I said to you the other day, that, you know, that I'm not so interested in the Euros, but it's a nice gap filler. Because this is normally the, the only cricket on in there. And I'm all right with cricket. I still don't understand it, but I pretend to do it. Um, so it's, it's a nice gap filler. I, I cannot wait, whoever we get, I cannot wait for that first match back. People allowed back in the stadium. Um, you know, what, 15, 20, how many, how many there are? Absolutely from the top. Because not only do we get behind the team, I think everybody owes him a huge thank you because I think they got a lot of us through this season with what he's achieved. Um, I'm not going to ask ask you to, to put his achievements, you know, in in five words, but maybe in six. Um, just <laughs> what a guy! That's all I can say. What See, that's a it. Guy. You can't. You cannot put into words the job he's done, the way that he's come in and turned us around, the job he's done with some of the younger players. He, you know, God forbid he goes to Palace or wherever that his name's or West Brom, wherever his name's being bandied about. I personally don't think he will. I think he'll he will stay with us for at least another season because he strikes me as being that sort of of man. Uh, loyalty, I think, does mean a lot to him. Again, what do I know? Um, but I do have one question for you because I think it's about time you answered a question for me. Red. <laughs> it could possibly be, but you'll not like it anyway. Like I said earlier on, we're a selling club. We always have been. So if we have to sell one of our younger players, which one's going? Um, if we have to sell one of our youngest players, I think Odor would be one. Um, because, like you say, Ben Williams is you know is is ready made. Is there? Um, but what I about can't... if it had to be one of the? Uh, I don't know. One of the four I think, I, years. I, I think I know. I think Callum Styles is probably high up the list. I think he's highly, highly rated. So young, there's huge value there, isn't it? We got him for a bargain from Bury. Um, you know, there could be interest in, in in like a Chaplin. You know, a team that's come up. You know, look at a Blackpool who have come up to the Championship. I don't know what their situation is like, and if they need a player or whatever. But um, I, 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 I sometimes feel sorry for Chaplin. Because I think it's a system that doesn't suit him. If you play four four two, and then everything is a bit more, you know what I mean. So Chaplin, Styles, Odor. I don't think anybody will come in for Woodrow, but I expect offers for Helic, um, maybe Anderson as well. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just how strong is the, how strong is the desire, and how healthy are those balancing books looking the profit or loss account to say we don't need to accept this offer. Yeah. Because the key to this is this group, except for some of the additions, and there weren't that many, was the same group as the previous season, you know, 70, 80%. And I think um, if we need to sell to survive, you know, you, you sell the player that had the least appearances for us, but maybe shows a huge amount of promise. Don't forget, though, um, Ritzmeyer, Schmidt, they're all under contract, might decide to sell them because they're all still under contract. So we might decide to just. Because Rich Meyer's going back. I'm not being funny. I, don't get me wrong. We're talking about Valerian Ismail. He might he might do a civic with him. And, and you think, what have we missed? <laughs> but I just don't think it's going to happen. No. Schmidt. Schmidt. I, again, I think the lad deserves uh, first-team football. But I've never... If, if you look at our strikers and you had to rate them, you know, forget DK, you'd go Woodrow, Morris, Freezer. Chaplin, Adebayejo. And Schmidt will probably be maybe just above Adebayejo. Yeah. Partly it's because they never really got a chance on a full 90 minutes or whatever. So some of those players that are out on loan. I mean, don't forget, we've got the uh, the young lad, uh, Agenson. He's a striker. He went down to... Oh, up, St- wait, Stephen. Who oh, went Stephen to Stephen? Ipsen. Ipsen. Like yeah. I'd forgotten yeah. about him. So he's probably due to come back. And um, is that the sort of player we've got 
just to go down and get regular. I don't know if he's played regular or not. Um, you know, Matty Wolf. Oh, he's just, back. Just, he's, he's been in, he's injured at the minute. He's he's yeah. doing like a, a recuperation, isn't he? Yeah. So it's it's there's still loads of fringe players on contract that might well, especially from abroad, I suppose, where you look at Ritz Meyer, where you look at Schmidt. Um I, I expect Dales to go because you're not going to carry wages, are you? You're not going to carry wages for players that are not playing. Although you could question that with Odor, and we'll never know, you know, where where he fits or or doesn't fit. Um, just the last question then. When you look back on the season, and in um, ten years' time, oh God, don't say that far in front. <laughs> we, we 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 sit in a pub. And we talk about, okay, you remember that season, COVID, when no fans. And you say, no, 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 no. I went to the first leg of the playoffs. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, though, mate. You know I wouldn't say that. <laughs> how, 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 would you, how would you remember last season? Because it's mixed, isn't it? Because it, it was very well from a distance, except that one match. It was very much from a distance. And it sometimes felt that we weren't really involved and we weren't that 12 men in five, six 10, 15 years. How are you going to look back on this season? It's been it's been a roller coaster ride, definitely. We've seen some fantastic football. We've seen some dire football. But even with the dire football, we've managed to get a point and sometimes three points, yeah. which is what we've never done before. We've always capitulated or folded and lost. But You'll remember, I think, this season for Ishmael coming in and making an instant impact. Yeah. You'll yeah. remember it for the Chelsea game, I think. I think you'll remember it for the Norwich game that we won because that was some of the best football we played all season. It really yeah. was. 100%. Uh, and I think, I think I'm, I'm really excited about next season. And we don't know who's going to come stay or whatever, but... He'll have a full pre-season with this this squad, which he didn't have last time. He came in in October. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to identify. I know they go with the spreadsheets, but he'll, he'll be able to look and say, that looks good or, or that looks good. The track record with signings has been all right so far. I mean, you know, uh, Morris, DK, just you know, Britain, Hellig. Um, and I just want to be part of it again, Steve. I just yeah. want to sit in the rain on a Tuesday night in the West End. I just I want I want to be I want to be in the fan zone again, um, having a pint of blonde because it's the only blonde I can get near. Now I'm nearly fifty. <laughs> you know what I mean? I I, I want to meet up with um, with my mates again and talk football. I want to walk home, well, to my car, uh, grinning like a Cheshire cat because we've won, or I want to go home and want to kick the cat and kick the bin over because we should have never conceded that last minute goal. And that's I think what we've missed, isn't it? Because it's all been. From a distance, it's the it's the involvement. You can enjoy it to a certain extent, but sitting on your settee on a Saturday afternoon is not um, it's not anywhere near like being like you say walking through that turnstile, getting your cup of bovril or whatever, paying eight quid for a pie that's cold in the middle. What pie though? Uh, meat and potato. Come on, meat and potato. It's got to be, hasn't like it? it. Uh, a, yeah, and, meat, and it's, just, meat. it's just listening. Theme from Rocky comes up, and you know, airs on back of your neck. Stand up. Yeah, yeah. I'll just throw this in the, in the air though, because I think this is the right time to say we got to playoffs. We weren't lucky enough to get through. We we. Had a fantastic season. We've we've met, you know we've kept the club going as supporters. We've made a bit of money. Hopefully we'll make a bit of money during the summer. Please God, Dane, paint the sodding letters on the Beckett stand because I've been banging on about this for the last five years. It's the only bit of the ground that lets us down because them letters are an absolute disgrace. A bit of red paint. I get a bleeding ladder me send. And paint them. Get the bloody letters painted. That's what I say. And on that note, uh, we finish the last red report of the 2020-2021 season. A season that saw no fans, but plenty of excitement on and on the pitch. Uh, a season that will remember for getting to the playoffs, but just falling at that last hurdle. And a season 
for a striker that joined us from America the day after he made his international debut and absolutely fired in some bangers. We like to thank Daryl DK for what he did and for what he's going to do for wherever he goes next. And thanks to the club for lending us the staff for our uh, the team behind the team. And let's hope we can continue with that next season. Um, of course, the TerraStore.com, who are our sponsors. And um, on Twitter, we will post the uh, uh, competition question. I will tell you it now, so if you are listening, um, please DM us. Don't put it on Twitter as an answer, because I got random page three girls from Latvia messaging us. You <laughs> wish. You <laughs> wish you did. You should see that again. Um, so the competition question is, Steve is really, really looking forward to going back into Oakwell, um, especially having a pie. But what pie is his absolute favourite? And by the way, they're not they're not a quid. Um, so that's a competition question, and we've got um, uh, the prize is a bar runner in the Barnsley Black and White away kit. It's a mouse mat, it's a mug, it's a little chaplain kit, and it's a it's a, a bottle opener as well. So that's a competition question. Steve's uh, favourite pie at Oakwell is. Dot, dot. Dot. We'll be back at the beginning of next season. Um, in the meantime, you'll see us on social media. We're hoping to do a, a quiz with the lads from What's the Crack. Um, and if you fancy listening to a podcast that might not be Barnsley or football related, but in general, have a listen to their uh, Euro 2020, but it's Euro 2021 uh, forecast because that's really good. There's some dad jokes from Steve, but hey. we forgive. <laughs> yeah, we and thank you very much for listening thank you very much for watching thank you for all your support um, this has been Steve Carlo for the Reds Report signing off for the season thank you <laughs>